paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker, the man who rules the world, takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Godbreaker at online booksellers today. Last weekend, Shazam! Fury of the Gods bombed at the box office, opening at $30 million on a $110 million budget and a $100 million marketing budget. And many in Hollywood and on social media want to blame actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson for the reason why Shazam! Fury of the Gods bombed at the box office, and they also want to try to blame him for the possible tanking of the entire Shazam! movie franchise. However, I do not see Dwayne Johnson as the one to, was to be culpable for the failure of Shazam! Fury of the Gods or the complete collapse of the entire Shazam! franchise. No, on most films, the two people with the most power on a production are the executive producer who controls the money as related to the film and the director who controls what goes on on a set. And usually on a set, these are the two individuals who have the final say on what goes on on a production, so I cannot hold Dwayne The Rock Johnson accountable for the failure of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. No, that happened with the executive producer and the director of the film, and more so the executive producer of the film, because it is the executive producer who goes out here and sets the whole standards for the production, and when I listen to the executive producer sitting there and saying, oh, it was Dwayne The Rock Johnson who said that he did not want Black Adam to be in the Shazam movies, that's where I have to call BS on that talking point. And I call BS on that talking point because it is the executive producer who chooses who gets hired and who is allowed to work on a production. So to say that Dwayne Johnson went out here and said, oh, I don't want Black Adam to be a part of the Shazam movie franchise. Well, who made that decision? It was the executive producer, again, who has the final say on anything. Because if Dwayne Johnson is coming in and making demands as related to where he's going to be on your production, that really shows the weakness of the executive producer as related to this production. Now, what I believe happened here is that these executive producers wanted to create a covert contract where they believed that if they went out here and recruited Dwayne Johnson to star in Shazam, he would go out here and be a way to get for them to get easy box office. However, it just didn't work out the way they expected. Now, these producers say, sat there and said, oh, well, Dwayne Johnson said he didn't want to play Black Adam in the Shazam movie because it would make him look like a bad guy. Well, any seasoned executive producer, once they heard an individual saying, oh, I don't want to play the role that I'm offering you, what they do is say, I'm withdrawing my offer and I'm going to go find another actor. That is what any good executive producer does. Unfortunately, the executive producers on Shazam really didn't have good self-confidence and they did not believe in their project. And because they didn't believe in their project, what they did was sit there and pander to Dwayne Johnson saying, oh, okay, we will go out here and, and make it where the character of Black Adam, a villain in the Shazam comics, is not going to be in the Shazam movie or set up for a cameo in the first Shazam movie. No, what we're going to do is go out here and create a Black Adam movie in order to appease Dwayne Johnson when you had the power to go out here and if he was making these kinds of alleged demands, you could go out here and say no to him because at the end of the day, who is signing the paycheck? It is the executive producer of the production. It is the executive producer, again, who has the final say on who gets hired on their production. It is the executive producer who gets the final say on who gets to work on their production. And all of these things could have been negotiated as related to the deal between 
Dwayne Johnson's agent and the executive producer. Unfortunately, it seems like the executive producer seemed to have lost their backbone and their stones as they were out here negotiating with Dwayne Johnson and they want to make Dwayne Johnson the bad guy in this story. However, Dwayne Johnson isn't the bad guy as related to the failure of Shazam Fury of the Gods. No, the failure of Shazam Fury of the Gods falls on two people. It falls on the executive producer and it falls on the director. And it falls primarily on the executive producer as I see it because the executive producer didn't go out here and want to lead their own production because as an executive producer it is your job to ensure that you hire qualified people to play roles and again, you, they were saying, oh, it was a missed opportunity for Shazam to take on Black Adam. Well, it was a missed opportunity for them to go out here and cast another actor as Black Adam. Because if Dwayne Johnson was not meeting the standards for the role, then it was the job of the studio executives to go out here and say, okay, well, if you don't want to play the role the way we established the character and the character is established in the source material then we are going to have to go out here and walk away from you that is how a leader establishes things as related to their project they sit there and say okay he's not going out here and wanting to play the role as it is related to the source material and if he doesn't want to play that role and build into our upcoming sequel, then we need to just cut ties with him. No matter how A-list they are or how strong he is on the box office, the project is not fitting what we need for the project. So, well, I would rather take a risk on a unknown in the role. And that's what the executive producer, if they had some backbone, would have done as related to Shazam Fury of the Gods and the setup for Shazam Fury of the Gods. Unfortunately, when I look at listen to these executives there and these people on social media, they want to again use Dwayne Johnson and make him into a scapegoat. And they want to make the black man into the scapegoat to cover up for the failure of all of those white executives who were the ones in charge of this production. Because it was those white executives who were in charge of the entire Shazam franchise who were not really thinking about where the, how popular their character was as related to the DC Universe because Shazam is really a fringe character in the DC Universe. He's not a major player like Superman, Batman, or Wonder Woman. And what they were looking to do was thinking, oh, we'll go out here and, and build this first movie up with Siviana. And they did a good job with this whole movie with Siviana. But the problem is, for the sequel, they didn't really set up with Black Adam. And they didn't set up with Black Adam, not because of Dwayne Johnson, but because of their own lack of ability to lead. Because again, if you wanted to have Black Adam in your movie that was greenlit by your executives at Warner Brothers, then you should have just they should have just said, okay, this actor is not going out here and meeting our terms. So what we're gonna do is go out here and take a bigger risk on a rookie actor. And maybe if they had taken a risk on a rookie actor the way they that um Richard Donner did with Terrence Stamp in Superman 2, they would have possibly had a great villain overall for the film. Because in Superman 2, they got Terrence Stamp to play Zod, and that role became Terrence Stamp's signature role, and it, he played that role so well with such, such just evil presence. I mean, he basically defined the character of Zod with his great performance, and he was, again, not a known name, but he was somebody was able to make that character come alive and that's something that the, the producers of this film were not really thinking about as related to Shazam. They weren't thinking with the forward thinking that Richard Donner was thinking when he did Superman 2 because when Richard Donner did Superman 2 he was like okay I need an actor that fits the character. I don't need to go out here and create a covert contract for the uh, villain to draw at the box office. No, what I'm gonna do is find an actor who fits the role, and once I get the actor who fits the role, then we can get the box office because 
people are coming to see Superman. But what they wanted to do was go out here and try to go out here and try to, again, pander to Dwayne Johnson. They made a Black Adam movie that was mid. And then they made a Shazam movie that was mid because their focus was on the actors and not on one of the most essential components of a film. And that is the screenplay. Because when it comes down to making a film, the foundation of a great film starts with the prep on the screenplay. And if your screenplay isn't good, your film isn't going to be good. And as I was sitting there reading the synopsis of Shazam! Fury of the Gods, this film was a jumbled mess because of the screenplay. And it was the screenplay that undermined this film. And it was just like Black Adam, the problem at Warner Brothers is the writing. And I can't, again, blame Dwayne Johnson for the failure of Black Adam or the failure of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. No, the failure started in the corporate office and it started in the corporate office with these white executives who sat there and looked to pander to Dwayne Johnson and allowed him to take over their production as they allege and again, showing weakness of leadership because these guys were sitting here saying, oh, it's the black guy who caused us to fail. No, it was you who caused yourself to fail because you refused to take the lead on your own project. You refused to set a tone for your project. You refused to set a direction for your project. And when it came down to the overall Shazam franchise, it was a jumbled mess. And it was a jumbled mess because the people who were producing this film didn't know where they wanted to go. I mean, you went from the first Shazam movie, which was a light action comedy, to the Black Adam movie, which didn't know what it wanted to be, whether it wanted to be an action movie or a comedy movie. And you also had Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which still had that lack of focus. It, again didn't know whether it wanted to be a comedy or an action movie. So the problems there start with the executive producer who did not set a tone for the film, did not have a vision for the film, and, did, and wound up in a hole because what they did was sit up here and try to force two concepts together. I mean, when I look at Black Adam, it stylistically doesn't fit with Shazam, and that's possibly why Dwayne Johnson wanted to have a separate movie because you have one movie that is lighthearted and kind of fun then you have another movie with a serious tone and you have a character who is serious so you have two characters who are basically diametrically opposed to each other and do not flow together organically but it's Dwayne Johnson who is the one who caused this mess no I can't say that because Again, when you're working on a screenplay and you're working on with different characters, those characters either work together or they don't. And that was something possibly Dwayne Johnson and noticed, like I noticed, that these two characters, Black Adam, who has a very serious tone, is not really flowing with this Shazam movie with a lighthearted comedy style. And if you had made, put Black Adam in the film, it would have been very jarring because here you have a very serious character, and then you have this guy, Zachary Levi, just going around goofing and joking. It doesn't really mesh well together, and that's why we saw Shazam! Fury of the Gods fall completely apart, because here we have going from a lighthearted character to these um, gods who are supposed to be very serious, and both of these characters are not synergizing on screen, and that's possibly why this movie basically flopped at the box office because these executives were not really thinking critically about how these two characters would flow together and they're sitting there talking about oh it's Dwayne Johnson who caused this because he was a so-called prima donna no the problem was you had weak leadership running this production and they were allowing the production to run them instead of them running the production. And that really showed to me with Black Adam when they reshot most of that film. Again, no confidence in what you're shooting. No confidence in your story because you're not confident about your screenplay. But they all want us to start believing, oh, it was Dwayne Johnson who led to this whole thing failing. No, I can't do that as, I believe that as somebody who has been studying the entertainment industry 
for over 25 years. No, as someone who has studied the entertainment industry for over 25 years, I know that at the end of the day, there are again two people who control a production and they are the executive producer and the director and the executive producer and the director are the ultimate ones who are in charge of how what goes into a film what gets put into the script they are the uh, ultimate ones who run a production and while Dwayne Johnson can go out here and again influence things like saying oh I want Henry Cavill to make a cameo again that was signed off by who the executive producer and the director that was signed off by them so if anybody wants to blame someone for the failure of Shazam 2 then you might have to go to Peter Safran you might have to go to the director you might have to go to the executive producer who was running Warner Brothers at the time because they were the ones who again could have easily said okay Dwayne Johnson might be an A-list star but we, he's not meeting the criteria we need for this role so we're gonna pass on him and we're gonna go out here and seek another performer and hire that performer for the role that is what any good executive producer would say even if they got a-list stars interested in their material they're gonna say oh I'm gonna put the material first and I'm gonna put the material first because the material is what we're trying to go out here and make the best adaptation of but when I'm looking at these people in Hollywood, again, these racists, they want to go out here and make the black man the scapegoat. They want to make the black guy the villain, but the black man isn't the villain. No, these executive producers and directors are their own worst enemy, and these Warner Brothers executives are their own worst enemy, and these Warner Brothers executives are the ones at fault for the failure of Shazam, Fury of the Gods, a film that when I looked at the trailer, which was just extremely mediocre with generic special effects and a generic story, and it had generic special effects and a generic story all due to the bad screenplay. And again, when I look at Black Adam and I look at Shazam Fury of the Gods, again, entertaining films, but just not good enough because of the screenwriting which is the big problem at Warner Brothers because at Warner Brothers they don't understand that like a guy who paints a car the start is with the prep and if you get good prep you're gonna get a great finished result and with the screenplays at Warner Brothers they're not doing enough prep to get a quality finish result and I know this from experience as being a screenwriter when I go out here and I'm prepping for a script I'm doing my research like I did for All About Marilyn where I'm doing research on black actresses I'm doing research on 1990s teen sitcoms I'm doing research on child stars I'm doing research to make sure that when I as I'm doing prep before I put fingers to the keyboard that the final finished product is rock solid and that's not something that was done in the case of Shazam 2 and again can't blame Dwayne Johnson an actor for not doing his job because he did his job the problem was the executive producer and the director did not do their job but instead of holding those white men accountable what they want to do is make the black man the bad guy and the bad guy here consistently has been Warner Brothers executives they are the reason why the Snyderverse was an inconsistent mess they are the reason why Shazam never really took off as a hero they are the big problem and what they want to do is deflect from their failure and they want to deflect from their failure and refuse to acknowledge that they are the problem because they have been the problem for over 40 years undermining Richard Donner as back as Superman to undermining Tim Burton on the Batman franchise going out here and allowing Joel Schumacher to go to excess and basically tanking the entire superhero movie genre until Blade revived the entire genre so they're sitting there saying oh it was it's the it's it's the um it's Dwayne Johnson no I'm looking at your track record as related to Richard Donner Tim Burton uh um, Joel Schumacher, what you based how they destroyed Patoff's career and derailed Halle Berry's career with Catwoman, and I'm also 
I'm looking at many of their other projects. I mean, these Warner Brothers executives do so much damage, but all they want to do is, again, participate in white supremacy by saying, oh, the black guy's the one who's at fault. No, it's these white executives who meddled into these films, and they are the reason why Fury of the Gods flopped at the box office, and they are the ones who are the reason for this, because they could have easily said no to Dwayne Johnson and gone out here and hired someone else to become Black Adam and get the build into the movie that they said that they allegedly wanted to make. Now, if you want to pick up some of my action-packed fantasy fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Hay series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, the novel The Thetas, or my vampire novel Eternal Night, or my bit romantic comedy Recipe for Success, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And if you want to try out my first comic, John Haynes at Death's Door, you can pick up a paper copy on Lulu right now. And if you also want to see me do more videos about comics, science fiction, and fantasy, you can send a donation to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The goddess next door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. Now available on Lulu, John Haynes at Death's Door. The man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the first John Haynes comic at Lulu.com today.